I went to the conference. 25 years ago, we were raised up by this prophet of God who did incredible teachings. And one of the things he told us is, he said, don't bother reading newspapers. Somehow, it went deep into my spirit. And I don't digest and absorb the bad news in the newspapers. But annually, sometimes biannually, I do this trip. I'll tell you why. I want to hear what the prophets of God have to say. Because the Bible says, when you believe the prophets, so shall you prosper. The prophets are God's mouth, is God's mouthpiece in the earth. And what they speak, I must hear. If not, how am I going to face 2017? And more than one prophet came to that platform and prophesied and, and said, this year is a year of great blessing. Wealth is going to be transferred into our hands. But you see, blessing is not just money. Blessing is holistic. You know, there are, so, there are people, I'll tell you, I just wrote down this sentence some years ago. There are people with many houses, but no homes. Money is not about, blessing is not just about money. Blessing is about blessing. When you feel fulfilled, hallelujah. So this evening I want to share with you, this is an old message. Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 to 4. The word of God came to Jeremiah. Actually don't open your Bible, right? I want you to just, I mean, just try to absorb it even as you hear it. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house and there I will give you my message. Every one of us has a potter's house, a place where God speaks to us. One of my, one of the potter's houses I have is Morris Circle's conference. When I go there, even before the conference begins, God speaks to me. Now, the word of God came to Jeremiah. Maybe he was in his bedroom, maybe he was out doing some work. But he said, Jeremiah, I have a message for you. But I'm not going to speak that message here because I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to go to the potter's house. Amen. And when you go to the potter's house, I will talk to you. To many of you, the potter's house is this place. God may not speak. God can talk to you anywhere. And He will. Amen. But when you come here, if this is the place God has appointed you to be, this becomes your potter's house. And God will say to you, we come to me. Go, for I will speak to you. And so Jeremiah goes to the potter's house and he sees this old potter. Well, I don't know whether he's old, but he sounds old. He goes to the potter's house, an experienced man who was creating a pot with his hands, forming a pot. And God began to speak to him. Now, before we continue, I want to tell you what God said to Jeremiah in 17.9. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. We are going to jump to something and then jump back. This will shock you. Jeremiah 17.9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. I tell you, when I saw this, I felt insulted. I thought maybe I have a good heart. But the Bible is very clear. He says, above all else, the heart is deceitful. Then it says, it is beyond cure. I think this is the amplified version. 
Let's read that refined person. The heart is deceitful above all things and is exceedingly perverse and corrupt and severely mortally sick. Uh, uh, who can know it? That's important. Who can know it? Perceive, understand, be acquainted with his own heart and mind. And the NIV says, it's beyond cure. Verse 10. The Lord searches the heart and examines the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. Isn't that amazing? I want you to know something this evening. No man's heart is good. This is not my words. These are the words of God. And you know what? Your heart is also not good. Because that's how the heart is. That's why in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, the Bible says, your sister, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, the Bible says, above all else, guard your heart. For everything that you do flows from the heart. Amen. You know, there are times when we have said to God, God, I will do anything for you. Simon Peter was a man like that. Lord, I will do anything for you. And within just a few hours, right, he forgot Jesus three times. Three times. Why? The heart of man is deceitful. So, if you trust any man or woman, when I say man, I talk not, it's not a gender, okay, it's not a gender issue, it's any man. If you trust any man, the only way you can trust that person is if he is in Christ Jesus. And not only that, if the word is strong in him. You know, the Bible says, can a mother forget her own children? No, but yet, they can. Even the heart of mothers and fathers are deceitful. The heart of hearts of children are deceitful. The hearts of husbands and wives who make commitments at the point of marriage, few years later, their hearts have been deceived. So the heart is something that can be easily deceived unless that heart is fully grounded in the word of God and continually holds on to the word. Because temptation comes and the enemy comes to deceive the heart. Amen. I'll tell you some tests. The tests of the heart. When money comes, when you have given a new car, a new job, a new house, a new position, new power and authority, a new title, new friends, a new ministry, a new anointing, success in life, then you will see if your heart is deceitful. Amen. I'll tell you, you know, Pastor Hepsiba has been a pastor for longer than me. I've been a, you know, man of God, a minister for 25 years. People have come and made promises to us. Pastor, I will never leave you. You know, thank God, I never believed it. <laughs> because I know how people are. Amen. Because people, they are, they are products of their environment and if their environment dictates it, they make these promises just like Simon Peter. But when trouble comes, they forget. When success comes, they forget. When money comes, they forget. Now, I'm not here to condemn those people because the Bible says even our heart and my heart and your heart is deceitful. 
above all things and beyond here. Only God Man. can. The Bible says Jesus is the anchor of our heart. Only He, only He can take this heart and secure it. Nobody else. You know, I like this story about King David. King David did many things. But God said about David, He's a, He has a heart like my heart. He did many things. But God loved the heart of David. You know, when David was, uh, I mean, he became a mighty king, all successful. I mean, he was world famous. He was twice as famous as Donald Trump. Because you see, Israel was the America of those days, and he was the king. One day, he was in his palace, and he remembered what his friend Jonathan had done for him. Jonathan was dead, and he called his servants and he said, is there anybody in this place that is related to Jonathan because I want to bless them for all that Jonathan did. Mm. And Jonathan had a son called Mephibosheth who was hidden and they brought him forth. It's a beautiful story which I will share with you one day. And he blessed him. He never forgot to help him. But you know something? Mephibosheth took that blessing and one day he stabbed him in the back. The heart of man is deceitful above all things. Never trust anyone. Dr. Serlo has taught us over and over again. Remember this very carefully. Treat place, uh, people, places and things as they are, not as they should be. It is one of his life principles. Treat people, places and things as they are, not as they should be. Hebrews 6 time, the hope we have, this hope we have as an anchor of our soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and entering into that which is within the way. Amen. Now let's get back to the potter's house. Now Jeremiah is in the potter's house. He said to himself, what is God doing with me? What is God trying to say to me? God said, Jeremiah, look at what the potter is doing. He's doing something special. He's taking a, a, a ball of clay, a ball of mud, very rough. And when you look at it, it has no value. Just like us when we first started out in life. And the potter takes this, this ball of clay and begins to knead it, begins to massage it, and begins to take out all the things that are not right. Just imagine when you are, if you look, look at yourself as a ball of clay and the hands of God are all, all around you and those fingers are going deep inside your soul. Let me tell you, when you get into the hands of God, it is a fearful thing. Because He doesn't let go. Amen. And He massages it, He changes it. He adds things to it. He takes out impurities until you are a, 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 a ball of clay that is worth creating into a pot. Hallelujah! Now before we continue, I want you to consider this. You can go to the Nugegona pavement and you can buy a nice pot for 200 rupees. That pot, you know, hasn't gone through much of a process. Maybe a couple of hours, 
Puriko killed fired up and a few days later it ends up on the Nubeva payment for 200 rupees. But there are pots that are made in China. They are auctioned on millions of dollars. The beginning of both those pots, when you compare, is a ball of clay. The same ball of clay, one ends up at 200 rupees, the other ends up in millions of dollars. When God looks at your life, He sees the end result. What can you become? He looks at you and says, what can I make of you? I have plans for you. I have a hope and a future for you. Not a plan to harm you, but a plan to give you a hope and a future. A plan to prosper you. And then begins this painful process of hurting you. Do you know that God hurts you sometimes? Yes. Just like parents hurt their children. It is a redemptive work. It is a work of love. It is a work of purifying. It is a work where He separates you. When you go the wrong way, He allows you to go. He allows you to face certain circumstances. But He never stops calling you back. He never stops expecting you to return. Only to, only to reconstruct your life and to restore you. Proverbs 14 and verse 12 says, There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but in the end it's death. God has a plan for you. Now, when you look at this, uh, this scripture that God is giving us, God was giving a message to the potter concerning Israel. I'll read it to you. Jeremiah 18. So I went to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. You know, when God begins to shape your life, He knows exactly what He is doing. Now let's, in our imagination, go into the potter's house. In one room, there is clay. I mean, the clay is smelling. It has no shape, it has no beauty. There's another place where the potter is is kneading the, the clay and is creating a pot. There's another place which has a kiln or a big oven where he puts it. Now let me tell you, there's another place also. A place of imperfect pots. Pots even after going into the oven comes out and it's not aligned, it's, it's crooked. They are cracked. But the potter never throws it, he keeps it. And the day will come when he will take it and he will crush it. And he will reuse it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? When you fall into the hands of God, He never lets go. Amen. He never lets go. You know, I was telling people, I have told this many times, I came to Christ when I was about 26 years old, and I grew up in a generation where men were mature and men don't cry. I mean, nowadays different. We grew up in a school where you don't need flowers. I mean, it was more like, what? <laughs> You know, you hit the girl on the head and just drag her to your tent. What, what's that uh, movie? Bill Man? Flintstone. Flintstone. 
You know, we came from the Flintstone generation. Okay, that was more romance. Anyway, I uh, I was telling people we never cried. We cried inside, but we never cried. But after I came to Christ, I have cried many times. Good, yeah. Good. Because you see, He has a way of crushing you. He has a way of bringing you to a place where you have no hope except you look up, Good. where He becomes your hope. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I want you to 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 know to to listen to this. The foolish learn by making mistakes, but the wise learn by watching the foolish. <laughs> Amen. Medicine has the power to improve the function of your heart. But only God can change the condition of your heart. Psalm 147 verse 3. He heals the broken heart and binds up their wounds. Let me tell you, God hates a broken heart. A broken heart is the result of rejection. It's the worst kind of pain that any, any human being can ever feel. Rejection. Rejection from parents, rejection from husbands and wives, any kind of rejection is the deepest cut. Psalm 147 verse 3, God says, I will heal the broken heart. Once again, what is the process of the potter and the clay? Crushed. He, first of all, sorry, before he's crushed, he massages and kneads the clay, removing the impurities. Anybody here who has gone through that process where the impurities have been taken out? Was it pleasant? Far from it. Amen. Some of, some of us, he had to put a bribe over our tongue while he was taking the impurities out. It was crushed. And if that wasn't enough, he put us in the fire. The pot is put in a fire and the fire is increased and I can almost hear the pot screaming save me it's hot in here anybody feel like that you want to jump out of the of, of the oven yeah and did God hear that prayer no because it was the process of the pot But one day, at some moment, the oven door opens. It takes out the pot. And the pot has transformed. From clay to a beautiful porcelain pot. He then takes out this beautiful pot. And he begins to work on it. And some pots he will cover with pure gold, 24 karat gold. He will hand paint it and then he will display it. It's worth millions. The beginning of every pot is a handful of clay, but the end result depends on what the potter has done in your life. Now, I know some pots. You say, God, take your hands away from me. God, I don't want to get into the oven. And we run from God. But God chases after us. So let the process 
get completed quickly. Because when you belong to God, I tell you, it's a fearful thing, the Bible says. But one day you will come out and you will be a person of great value. Yeah. You know, I consider myself a person of value. And I'll tell you there's only one reason. The process of God in my life. Amen. That's it. That's why I'm here. It's nothing to do with money or education or position. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. None of that brings value. Except the process of the heart. So I want to remind you. When God begins a process, He has only one target, the heart. We started off by telling you the heart is deceitful of all things. The process is there to change the heart. Through all the painful experiences I have had since I came to Christ, I tell you, you know those days I used to tell people, come to Christ, and everything will be okay. <laughs> now I tell them the very opposite. Amen. Amen. But I tell you, life is not worth living without Christ. in the making. 
and there will come a day when God will look at you in the realm of the spirit and say to his angels, that man, that woman is my chosen anointed servant. So go through this process, you know, without screaming and shouting and crying. Hallelujah. Because it's temporary. It's temporary. Once again, trust no one. And above all, don't trust yourself. Don't trust yourself. Because you see, and going on 53, in the last five years, in the last five years, not in my early years, I have looked at myself and said to myself, I never thought I could say such a thing or do such a thing. But you see, when you go through the trials of life, only then do you know whether your heart is deceitful or not. You don't know what your heart is until you go through the fire. And my goodness, I realize my heart is not what, it, what I want it to be or what I thought it to be. Trust me when I tell you. Hallelujah.